Hi there, kids! I am Teacher Eric. Did you see that? Were you with me the whole time I was traveling from places to places? Sad, right? I can only imagine their suffering during that great famine in Egypt and during that time in the Spanish flu era. Wow, it's been very difficult to fight the virus and to survive the famine. Knowing that their technology and tools weren't as advanced as ours today. Hmm, I want to ask you, how are you doing during this pandemic? Are you having a hard time as well? Do you feel stuck right now? You know, not being able to be with your friends, you know, trying to focus on your studies while still adjusting on the online setup. It is so frustrating at times, right? And it makes us feel hopeless. That's why we all need Jesus. Our living hope. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. You must hold on to promises with confidence that those promises will happen. Maybe you're asking, why Jesus? Well, let's see what the Bible has to say about that. We can find real hope only in Jesus. So guys, are you ready? Before we continue, please make sure to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. And remember to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to keep you posted and updated of the latest happenings here at NextGen Live. Come, let us dive into God's Word and learn why Jesus is our hope and learn how He can keep us going as we continue in our series, Live in Hope, here in Next Gen Live. First, let us open in prayer. Lord Jesus, help us to understand what hope is. Open our hearts and our minds as we continue to trust and believe that you have something wonderful ahead for all of us and that all of these things, we can make it through because all things are possible with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. What do we see in common with the Spanish flu and the Great Famine and with COVID-19? Yes, they have caused serious illnesses and deaths. Not only that, a lot of people lost their jobs, their drive to move forward, and eventually they lost hope. As a result, people get scared and desperate, causing them to complain and get mad at each other. But despite these negative circumstances, the pandemic also brought out the best in people. Instead of complaining and blaming each other, they did something good for others. How about you kids? Who do you want to be? A person who complains or a person who serves during pandemic? According to 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10-11, to 11, For a person must do these things to enjoy life and have many happy days. He must not say evil things. He must not tell lies. He must stop doing evil and do good. He must look for peace and work for it. Here, the Apostle Peter is reminding us that if we want to live a good life, then we must not speak harmful words, speak lies. Instead, turn from evil and do good. What do you think would happen if people see Christians disagree all the time, complain all the time, and even blame each other? Is that going to reflect that we put our hope in Christ? No, right? Good thing 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 to 22 gives us some practical ways on how we can fulfill our calling just like Jesus. We can learn, number one, we must speak the truth in love. Number two, 
we must be peaceful towards one another. Number three, be courageous even when, you know, facing suffering. Number four, use every opportunity to share your source of hope, that's Jesus, with gentleness and kindness. From the same passages, we can read from verse 14, But even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. Let's continue in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. It reads, Christ suffered while He was in His body. So you should strengthen yourselves with the same way of thinking Christ had. The person who has suffered in his body is finished with sin. Strengthen yourselves so that you will live lives here on earth doing what God wants, not doing the evil things that people want. Because we have Jesus, our living hope, every believer is called to live for the will of God and serve others so that they too will see God. Yes, even when it is not easy and even if we need to suffer for doing this, we must do good things. So, we need to put our focus on showing love, showing genuine kindness, praying for others, and as Christians, use every gift that God gave us to serve others, even when it's hard and even if it will cause us to suffer for Jesus. So if we know that God has called us and we have an inheritance to look forward to, we have every reason to live for God and show others that we have this living hope that can only be found in Jesus Christ. And because of this, we can still be joyful and keep on going even when we go through suffering. And this is one of the blessings of being a follower of Jesus. Let's all read this from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 to 14. It says, My friends, do not be surprised at the painful things you are now suffering. These things are testing your faith. So do not think that something strange is happening to you. But you should be happy that you are sharing in Christ's sufferings. You will be happy and full of joy when Christ comes again in glory. When people insult you because you follow Christ, then you are blessed. You are blessed because the glorious Spirit, the Spirit of God, is with you. And this brings us to our big idea. Jesus is our hope. Keep going. Let us say that one more time. Jesus is our hope. Keep going. Here are three simple things that you can do today to apply what we have learned. Number one, repay evil with good. Always respond in love, especially when the people around you are mistreating you. God sees what is in your heart. It is all that matters. Number two, find the blessing in suffering. If you are tempted to stop praying or reading the Bible, to being excellent in school and at home, remember that you have a calling from God to be like Jesus. Number three, live out and speak Speak about the hope that is in you. Changing your attitude towards life will bring encouragement to the people around you. And when you have an opportunity to share the gospel, go for it! What did Jesus do for us? Jesus suffered on the cross to pay for the penalty of our sins. You see, we need to pay for our sins. And the payment is death. You know, someday, we will all die when it is time for us to leave earth. But the payment for sin is spiritual death. And this means to be separated from God forever. The place will give endless pain and suffering. You see, friends, there's no peace there. 
And now, because of God's great love for all of us, He doesn't want anyone to be separated from Him. That's why He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to take our place in paying for our sins. Receiving Jesus and placing our full hope and trust in Him means believing that Jesus alone can save us. He saved us so we may be with Him now and in heaven when we die. Do you want to be with Jesus in heaven? Do you want to place your hope in Him? You may do so in a simple prayer expressing your desire to trust Jesus with your life and obey Him so you may live a life that pleases Him. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for giving me hope through your Son, Jesus. I admit that I have not been living to please you, but now I know that I should. Please forgive my sins. Lord Jesus, you are the living hope. Please come into my life and be my Savior and Lord. Be the source of my joy and my strength to endure through all of my struggles. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer for the first time, I welcome you to the family of God. This is just the beginning of your wonderful journey as a follower of Jesus Christ. To help you jumpstart your journey, we will use the acronym G-R-O-W or GROW. G. Go to God in prayer daily. R. Read God's Word regularly. O. Obey God moment by moment. And W. Witness to others about Jesus Christ. Hey kids, thank you for spending time with us here in Next Gen Live. At the end of our video, we have discussion questions for you and your family. To receive updates, like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash CCF Next Gen and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash CCF Next Gen. Once again, this is your teacher, Teacher Eric. Remember our big idea? Jesus is our hope. Keep going! Let's say that again with feelings. Jesus is our hope. Keep going! We will see you in the next video and God bless you all! Want to be part of a Next Gen small group? If you are 7 to 12 years old, you can be part of an online squad by registering on the link in the description or scanning this QR code. Hope to see you there!